Hi guys, welcome back. I um, hope everyone is safe and well at the moment. Um, obviously being sensible and the quarantine style things going on. This COVID-19 is still sort of uh, there, um, unfortunately. But uh, I'm still trying to uh, give you some videos every now and again to kind of bring inspiration and keep people motivated and everything with the cameras. So hopefully some of my videos have helped with that. Um, always happy to listen to comments, advice, anything like that, or if you've got any questions that I can possibly help with, I shall try my hardest to um, help you as well. So don't forget to click that subscribe button and the little notification bell as well, so you see when my new videos pop up. Um, but basically today I'm just going to talk about the RX10 Mark IV uh, compared to a full frame uh, 35mm uh, DSLR or mirrorless camera, a bit like the A7R4 or the A7R3 for example, or um, one of the Canon um, EOS Mark IIs or something like that, yeah. or 6D or something like that. One of the one of the cameras I don't actually use. <laughs> um, so basically, we're going to talk about bokeh. So the way a one-inch sensor camera um, can produce bokeh, obviously with different lenses and things like that, we are kind of stuck with the RX10 Mark IV. It's got one one lens, but it does give you an amazing range of 24 to 600 mil, and that's at f2.4 to f4. It's widest aperture. You can stop it right down to f16. But it's not really recommended um, because you do get distortion problems and refraction problems and things like that. So generally, it's sort of um, I think it's f five point six is its sort of best range. So f two point four to f five point six is kind of its best range. If you're going to get creative and you want some starbursts and stuff like that, obviously f sixteen is still sharp. The image is coming out, but still sharp at f sixteen. Um, but it just gives you that nice range and usability of the camera. Um, yes, compared to, for example, the A7R4 with a portrait lens on is going to give us some very different looks. So that's all about the RX10 Mark IV. I'm going to show you some of the work I've taken, um, just a mixture of stuff. So it could be portraits, wildlife, um, landscapes, macro stuff, anything like that. And uh, I'll just show you the differences between the all-in-one camera, the RX10 Mark IV, and a full-frame camera. So let's go and have a look. So bokeh is a Japanese word, or it basically means blur. So it's all to do with the visual quality and out of focus areas of your photo. So basically the foreground or the background, whatever is out of focus is basically bokeh. And as you can see here, are these shots here of Buster. These are the RX10 Mark IV at the moment. Um, shot f4, 600 mil. So you've got some really pleasing background blur, but really nice sharp um, image here. So that's what I was talking about, the depth. So basically, a smaller sensor will give a little bit more depth which means both of his eyes are pretty much sharp um, but you've still got that beautiful um, soft background that's blurred out with the shapes actually from the flowers and stuff in the background or the leaves this shot here is not so much bokeh because obviously the distance is is key um, so 600 mil f4 but obviously the background slightly blurred this shot here um, of Jess is at f2.4 uh, wide open at um, 24 mil but hardly any um, bokeh at all because we're at a wide angle so a wide angle you get a lot less depth uh, sorry a lot more depth and a lot less um, blur because obviously due to the, um, the wide angle part so this is a shot here wide angle 24 uh, millimeter f5.6 a uh, nice sunset they're going on there with the uh, rapeseed field and the next shot here is actually at 600 millimeters f4 um, but obviously you can see the bokeh in the black background is so obviously the sun's out of focus but all the flowers and everything are sharp um, this shot here, a wide angle shot of Jess there, and uh, as you can see there, most of it is in focus, apart from the stuff right in the distance, it's just slightly blurring out. So it does give you very pleasing images, and then at 600mm, I had to stand quite a long way back here, and uh, as you can see there, the sea is now blurred out nicely, the sea wall is just about visible, and that chimney there is all out of focus. This shot here, another 600mm f4, sea in the distance, the horizon nicely blurred, but we've got a lovely sharp foreground. Um, horizon and uh, a very sharp um, looking model and uh, this was a shot of Dover Castle so it just shows you you can do some portraiture but you have to change your technique so where I'd have a 135 lens maybe for some portraiture on a full frame camera having 600 millimeters on the RX10 kind of gives you the options but you have to have the, the space to actually be able to do it so as you can see here nice sharp image on the seagull and the ferry there is out of focus but it's not so far out of focus that you can actually still see it's a ferry but your focus point is really sharp on that um, on that seagull same sort of shot here 
Um, the sea in the distance, just about to see a horizon, nicely blurred, the clouds are blurred, but the horse, the wild horse there, lovely and uh, sharp, including the foreground. This shot here as well, wide angle shot, f5.6, pretty much everything's in focus apart from the stuff right in the distance where it just softens off nicely. So this is um, Jess again and a rapeseed field again. So lovely shot, 600 millimeters, foreground bokeh and uh, background bokeh worked really, really well. But I'm around about 40 feet away from her to get that effect. Where normally, if I'm using an 85 or a 135 um, full frame camera uh, with a, those lenses, you you can stand within less than 10 feet, 10 feet something like that. Uh, same sort of shot here, f4, 600 millimeters, and it just kind of gives you that. Um, it does give you the options, and you can get some very good portraits from it. You know, they work really well. But as you can see, she is nicely in focus. All of her facial uh, features and everything are in focus. Her arms, everything, her hair. But you've still got a lovely um, soft background and foreground. Uh, this is Esther again. Um, so this is a full frame camera. As you can see, beautiful circular um, or even slightly oval uh, bokeh in the background there. Um, Abby here, same sort of thing. This is on the 85mm. Um, nice circular bokeh in the distance, but also the foreground of the grass all nicely blurred out. This is shooting through a tree. So Esther there. And you've basically got everything's out of focus apart from her. And that's kind of, you know, f1.4. Um, kind of cool shot. This shot here, um, Melia doing the wedding dress thing at, at McDonald's worked really well. Um, but that's actually a 135 f1.8. But I'm about 150 feet away, so it gave us really good depth still, but actually blurred the background out in the distance, like in the back, real far background of uh, distance. 35mm f1.4. And uh, this shot is, here is the RX10 Mark IV f4. But as you can see, the background of, from Jess into the ceiling, or actually the bunker where we were. Um, pretty much a little bit out of focus. This shot here um, of Charlotte, 35mm f1.4 at f1.4 and you can see straight away, boom, it's gone. The background just softens off really nicely. Same here, Esther again, 35mm f1.4. Nice wide angle shot but everything's out of focus apart from her. But the depth is just enough but I'm still stood six or eight feet away from her, something like that. But having that really soft um, background sometimes really makes your subject stand out like you wouldn't believe. This shot here is actually so just showing you the bokeh actually in the reflection more than anything. So that was the 135 um, lens there at f1.8. This shot here, the G Master uh, f uh, yeah 135 f1.8 at f1.8, really gave you some really nice soft bricks in the background and made Esther really the subject um, of the shot there. It worked really really nicely. Most of these shots here are tweaked, they're not edited, they are literally just a few adjustments on brightness and um, sort of contrast and stuff like that, maybe convert to black and white. Uh, this is RX10 Mark IV, 600mm, same again. And this is the kind of shots you can get from this thing, it's absolutely awesome. You just need good light to keep the ISO down to 100 as much as possible to give you the cleanest shots. Um, but it, it is really a really good tool, it really works nicely. But as you can see, Wildlife shots with a little nice little bit of bokeh of the other tree there, uh, bits of branches and stuff sticking out in the background, nicely out of focus. Um, same again here, but very, very flattering um, bokeh there. It's almost perfectly circular, um, but nice and sharp on the bird. Worked really, really well. This shot here I really like. It's just a rose, but the background is gone. And I'm about 20 feet away from the actual rose, and the background was miles away. So that was the RX10 Mark IV. This is back to the A7R3 uh, F, uh, oh, sorry, 135 F1.8. Really cool shot, dear. And even I managed to get even closer. And as you can see there, the background's completely gone. But as you can see, the line of focal plane from the front to the bottom right, where it's out of focus, into the focal um, depth, and then back out again, is very, very shallow. And I was about 30 feet away, roughly. Um, today, RX10 Mark IV, 600mm uh, bluebell. As you see, background's completely gone. This is shooting through some other bluebells. So basically, I'm shooting through out of focus stuff. So, But the, as you can see, the lines of the trees in the background are out of focus. So it's not circular, it's more like lines. So this one here, same sort of thing. I'll just move to a different angle and the lighting and everything slightly changed. But you just got a very soft, nice, out of focus background. Nice bit of bokeh there. It's just changing your techniques. So where, where you'd actually have um, the option to 
open your lens right up to like f1.4 we don't have that option um, but you can still get some amazing shots like this which are lovely circular bokeh in the background that was at 24 millimeter at f2.4 this shot here is actually at 300 millimeters and I fired the flash just to light up the fern but also the background is quite nicely blurred another bluebell shot probably the last one hopefully <laughs> um, they are basically their end today so there'll be another year before you see any of these um, basically again another shot 600 millimeters but as you can see lots of color in it lots of shallow depth and this is where I was really pleased with so this is at um, about 200 millimeters uh, focused on the leaves there and thinking it was quite windy so they're moving around so they're probably not as sharp as they could be but same again here um, beautiful bokeh in the background the circular circles uh, with the sunlight coming through um, through the leaves so that worked really quite nicely and then um, another bluebell shot actually is the last one um, again wide angle f2.4 to give you really nice shallow depth but because I'm quite close to the bluebells um, it gave me a really good um, shallow uh, image. Same here, 600 millimeters um, f4. Um, I think it's a lace wing uh, bird there, but really nice soft background. So basically, just utilize the zoom lens. Uh, using the zoom like this, 600 millimeters f4. All of the snail is in focus, but you've got a lovely shallow depth of field. So utilize your apertures and the zoom lens part of the actual camera to give you what you need to see end of the day um, so if you're shooting portraits step back zoom in that's what I would say um, and one last shot here is Esther again and one of my favorite shots I've, I've taken let's just put it in um, basically uh, the 135 again and uh, as you can see there it just disappears off into the distance and that's how easy it is with a faster lens and also a full-frame camera but obviously like I said if you've got the RX10 or any other camera that's got a one inch sensor, utilize the zoom lens to give you the bokeh effect by zooming in. Um, you may have to stand back a long way, but I think it, it's a way around. Um, it's just a different technique, and it just helps you get what you'd like to see rather than having maybe a lot more depth in the shot that you didn't really want. And sometimes you can edit as much as you like and you know even though mobile phone cameras now have got quite good portrait modes and they basically add in fake bokeh um, it does work quite well but it doesn't work anything like this you know completely different sort of situation so um, anyway, I kind of hope that was interesting um, any questions or comments below please feel free uh, like I say don't forget to click that subscribe button and the little notification bell and uh, I should be put some more videos up soon um, I've just been looking through some of my photos, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to utilise some of these in, in this video. So, um, anyway, I shall see you soon, guys, um, and uh, take care.